this side. Now, to the second bit of the uh, public inquiry, I want to show you a video uh, of, of what happened today at the, at the IDRA uh, public inquiries. Why is that video important and is it linked to the protest? Definitely it is. Because if you listen to the uh, protesters, they were clear. And, and remember that IDRA was just last week. That's one of those that was really the final, um, you know, the straw that broke the back of the camel in, in pushing the youth wing of the NDC to say, enough is enough, let's hear the streets. And so let's, let's bring in what happened today, because this is, I guess, one of those demands being met, as some of the government officials have intimated, because the committee is looking into this to bring justice to those who have been affected, two people were killed so far. Okay, so this is Erasmus Sari Donko, my colleague, and I respect him because he's done a yeoman's job, put himself in a line of fire so that you can get um, pure, unadulterated report of what happened in Idra when the protest happened last week. He was called before the committee, the ministerial committee probing the Idra uh, protest and the subsequent deaths that we saw, and he gave a testimony. And a few things I want to point out to you, and a lot of questions we want to ask on the back of the, the way the whole inquiry went today when my colleague Erastos, a gallant man, very daring indeed, came before them. Let's play that. I'll pause at bits when I need to. Let's, let's play that. You see, there is, a, there is a portion where they have uh, written something. Yes, we are all caca. Police arrest two suspects involved in attack of hashtag fix the country campaigner. You understand? But this is a, a matter you are now telling us that you did not take steps to ascertain whether, in fact, he Kaka was a member of the fix the country campaign group. So why should your outfit in this uh, particular clip indicate there that some two persons have been arrested in connection with the murder of uh, Kaka, a member of the uh, hashtag Fix the Country campaign. My Lord, that was the... Important. And you will know that this then becomes the focus for the entire time Erastus were before the committee. And don't forget, before we even go into any of the analysis I'm going to do for you, let's go back to the seeming um, terms of reference that the presidency put forward, for which reason this committee was established. And I want to read to you verbatim what the president's own statement, the directive he gave was. And that gives you a sense of what the terms of reference is. The terms of reference for this committee, and by the way, that was the chairman there. That's the chairman. Um, you know, Justice Kupsi speaking, asking that question about a tag, a hashtag, and a tag that was rolling while the live event of the protest was ongoing that we were covering live. He was, he was asking that question. Before you make, to make sense of it, let's go back to the terms of reference. The presidency says they've directed the Interior Minister Ambrose Derry to, quote, conduct forthwith a public inquiry into circumstances that led to the unfortunate occurrences of Tuesday, 29th June 2021. So there's a very specific day's event which they are supposed to probe. The circumstances that led to that event, and the presidency were clear in choice of words. They call the events, they, they call it occurrences, but qualified it as unfortunate occurrences. You have to probe that event. No more, no less, circumscribed and made recommendations on that day, what happened that day. So that to start analyzing what they were doing today, you need to ask yourself, so what occurrences happened on the day? There were three occurrences that we put together that happened on the day. One, Kaka was buried. That's one. And remember the presidency says, unfortunate occurrences. Would you categorize the burying of Kaka as unfortunate? You definitely not. I mean, so that doesn't come into what they were supposed to look into, right? Second event that happened, after the burial, the people went on a protest because, of course, they were angry that somebody they identify with has been killed. That's the second event that happened, a protest. Third is police military called in 
guns were fired, people were killed. Third event, right? And that also agrees with the police's own narration of events, right? So that is the three occurrences. We can discount the first because you can't put the burial in the same category as an unfortunate occurrence, but you can definitely put the two again if the president decides to call the protest as such, then you can put in that category, right? I mean, and of course, we saw, as we've seen some of the videos, there were throwing of stones, etc. So you can put that in the path of the, of the protest. Now, the key thing to note is then you have a question that begins about, to a journalist, who, by the way, I must emphasize this very importantly, I list the occurrences for you so that I, and to note the terms of reference and so that you can appreciate that in what, in, in which of these occurrences on that day, which you're supposed to probe, would you attribute to a reporter's job, for example? Did the reporter cause the protest? Did the reporter cause the shooting that led to the death? Did the reporter cause the throwing of the stones? These are things you need to be paying attention to. That's why I broke it down for you. And so we have the chairman ask the question about a tag, and I want to read a tag for you. The tag he took issue with, and he was pressing the journalist on it. What was the tag? We wrote on the, on, on the uh, whilst the thing was being covered live, by the way, and so I'll come back to that. That's also a significant point. We are all caca. Police arrest two suspects involved in a tag of hashtag fix the country campaigner. That is what he was referring to and was questioning my colleague Erastos about. Now, the key point to note about that is we are reporters. The campaigner who died, they fixed the country campaigners themselves issued a statement claiming him as one of theirs. That's the first thing to know. We are reporters. The second, the police themselves in the statement also say that is a subject of interest for them in their inquiry, in their investigations. The link between his activism as a link to fix the country campaign and social media activism and the possibility that that may have been the reason why he may have been killed. The police was looking into that. So for the campaigners, it was one of theirs. Two things you can describe him as. One, fix the country campaigner, because the people themselves who are campaigners identify him as one of their own, or a social media activist. But then, that became a key focus for them. And remember, as I go on, without Erastus' fantastic job, there will be no other video evidence for this committee's work. Absolutely none. All the footage that you've seen on social media that some have borrowed and cropped out Joy News, it's all his work. Fantastic gentleman. With a cameraman who was bold, when bullets were flying, somebody who was shielding them got killed in front of them. The cameraman still managed to capture a lot of what you saw. Everything you saw, a lot of it, he captured it. Without him, they have nothing really to work with. You know what else would they have to work with? The minister of the region, who is the chairman for the security council there, came before the committee before Erastos. He said he also had a video. This video we played on the same show last week of the water cannon vehicle going, the people following it and throwing stones at it. That is his video. He was asked, what's the source of it? He says, I won't tell you, but I can give it to you. So without Erastus, you only have the word and the video that tells the story of the regional commander who says, I authorized the, the deployment. So it, without Erastus, this would be very difficult to establish. And yet, the questions were about um, tags. It almost became an ethics class when we are talking about the death of two people. One person has his leg amputated Many others got injured. Play on. Tag, the tagline for uh, Kaka and what he was doing. And in fact, the Fix the Country campaigners uh, came out with a release indicating that he was a member and that that was the job he was doing. Um, later on, when we went to Ejra, his family, some of his family members indicated he wasn't a member. Some said he was a member. So. Uh, there is that uh, confusion as to whether he was a member, he's not a member. But what he did and what he was doing on social media and on his pages is similar to uh, what the Fix the Country campaigners are doing. <laughs> Erastus, 
I, I think that uh, ethical journalism requires two things. First, that you verify, you cross-check your sources and your information, and that that is then considered also fair, what you put out. Do you think that on this occasion, you, you were um, you know, aligned to these two um, tenets of journalism? My Lord, I Post that appreciate... For me. That is Juliet. Juliet, and Juliet is Pen Plus Byte. It's a civil society um, head of a civil society group called Pen Plus Byte, right? And they operate in the space of, you know, media work sometimes. Trained journalists hold a few. Um, a, a very reputable organization, right? And she's the head of that. So she's a person who is expected to bring that side to the conversation in terms of what the media would have done. She asked a question about ethics. When you are probing circumstances that led to the events of a particular day in which two people died, this then becomes an ethics class when two people are dead. Now, the issue they were taking with that scroll on the television on the day was a live event. There are some who may argue that what we are probing was circumstances that led to. Was there a suggestion there that the live report of the ongoing demonstrations cause the demonstrations. That obviously will be an absurdity if you do that analysis and come to that conclusion. Why? Because it is a live event that we were covering. And you, so the, the people who were demonstrating could not have possibly been inspired to throw stones. And I, Vladimir Chudansu describes it as hooliganism could not have possibly been inspired by what we was covering live. We are covering the events live. So it, you have to rule that out, definitely, because it was a live event. And yet, there is a lot of focus on ethics. That clearly is not part of their remit, to be dealing with ethics of something that led to the death of two people, right? Obviously, as I've illustrated, the terms of reference they give them, this shouldn't be a focus. He's a journalist. What he's come there to do is to help you, help you with information and what he's captured. You ask him questions about the video. I have been before the Commission of Inquiry before. That's exactly what happened. I want you to play on, and then this then drags on until the end of this particular sitting. Play on. Uh, your concern a lot, uh, but to um, criticize my own. Uh, uh, something that I do not have too much control over at the time I was reporting uh, will be a bit uh, unfair. Please go on. I still want. I still want. I still want you to play on. Okay. So that's the rustles they answer the question, and then later you have Vladimir Chudanso also take over, and he asks the question. This, I guess, tells you what, why the where the questions were leading to. And I want to quote him. He says, don't you, think the media, don't you think the media is to blame, and I'm quoting him, for some of the things that happened? Don't you think the media is to blame for some of the things that happened? So already he is suggesting that, and remember, go back to the specific issue they're taking with the tag, that that coverage may have led to that particular event of the day. How is that possible when the events of that day we're covering the live event of a protest. You need to bear that in mind. And that there's a lot of questions that this have raised um, about the, the conduct and the focus of this committee. And I want to go back to the terms of reference. It is conduct forthwith a public inquiry into the circumstances that led to the unfortunate occurrences of Tuesday, 29th June, 2021. That is exactly it. It's, uh, you can suggest that the live coverage of an event caused the event. It just can be. It's, it's just not some, an argument you can sustain. But that's what the focus of it was. And my colleague was subjected to that for quite a while. But of course, we have made the videos available to them. And again, they played bits and pieces of the videos that were not indeed the full ones that we had given them. That would have helped them. We are committed to assist. We've done that before with the Commission of Inquiry into Ayawaso. 
That's one of the key things I wanted to stress for you on today.